So in this video, I want to look at the uh, operation of the magnetic motor starter. Uh, look at the components uh, of the motor starter and the basic stop start with memory operation uh, with the uh, magnetic motor starter. Okay, so the magnetic motor starter is used to control our motors that, that are used in industry. And uh, there's five components here. Uh, that we have to work with with the uh, magnetic motor starter. Okay, so there is the coil, the main contacts, the overloads, the overload contacts, and the auxiliary contacts. Okay, so those are the five main components. Okay, so let me just point those out to you real quick. So you have the coil, which is located right here for this particular motor starter. You have the main contacts, which this is the contactor. So our input wiring for our three phase power would go into these terminals here for the main contacts. And they come out on this side over here. And then you have your overloads, which is this unit right here. And the three connections at the bottom here would go out to the motor to monitor the current flow of the motor. You have the overload contacts, which are located here on this particular motor starter. So you have the normally closed overload contact and the normally open overload contact. And then you have the auxiliary contacts. Now for this particular one, that's on top. Okay, sometimes they'll be on the side just depending on the model of motor starter that you're using and the manufacturer and how they make it okay so uh, the overload contacts you know they can be in different configurations so this brand offers uh, two different ones where one just has two contacts and one has a group of four so i'm using the group of four on my example um, so if you look at the back you can actually see the contacts and if you look you can see the difference in the normally open and normally closed uh, just by how the design is looking straight down at the uh, at the contacts okay so just looking at the group of four here you can see the two in the middle have a similar design and the two outside are the same so the two in the middle are my normally closed and the two on the outside is my normally open okay and there's listed the manufacturer's terminal numbers for those auxiliary contacts and they're listed on the one for the two as well okay so those auxiliary contacts just slide on the top so just to give you an example so here's my auxiliary contact and it just slides onto the front there. So when the main coil pulls in the main contacts, it pulls in the auxiliary contacts with it. Okay, so this part here moves and that pulls in those auxiliary contacts at the same time it pulls in the uh, main contacts of the motor starter. All right, so here I have wired the uh, stop start with memory or seal in as it's referred to um, circuit for the magnetic motor starter uh, so i have three components the motor starter itself and then my two push buttons of course there's a lot going on with the motor starter okay um, and before i even get into the control wiring let me just talk about the power circuit wiring again so the main three phase power is going to come into these three screw terminals up here at the top and then again the power out to your motor is going to come out of these three down here okay so that's not connected for my example here i'm using um, but you would need that to actually run the motor all right so what i have connected is only the control circuit all right and again, for my example here, just like in my previous videos, I'm using a DC uh, coil, uh, but the control wiring is gonna be the same, whether it's a DC coil or 
an AC coil, okay? The difference is just where you get your power source from. I'm using a 24 volt DC supply here. Um, if it were an AC coil, you would be coming off of your control transformer. All right, so let me just walk you through the wiring and show you that on the ladder logic diagram as well. All right, so we have to bring power into the stop button. So that is this wire here coming into the stop. Then we come out of the stop into the start. So that is this wire here. We come out of the start into the coil of the motor starter. So that is my A1 for this coil. Okay, so that is this wire right here. It's coming out of the start into A1, okay? And it is labeled A1 right here, but you probably can't really see that in the video. Okay, so this is called A1 and A2 for the coil contacts. That can be different depending on the manufacturer specifications of the motor starter. All right, so we come out of A2 of the coil and we go into the normally closed overload contact, which for this one, is 95 and 96. So I come into 95, I come out of 96 and go back to my power source, okay? For this example, it's the negative side of my DC supply or it will be your neutral side of the control transformer if you're using AC, all right? So I have my positive side coming into the stop button, all right? So that's my first line. Then the second line here is my auxiliary contact. So when you're wiring based off of the ladder logic diagram, you want to work your way just as if you're reading a book. Go left to right, top to bottom. So that's my first line. So I would wanna go left to right when I wire it and then come down to the next line and wire that. Okay, so you don't wanna do the stop and then try to get into all of this and then go across, okay? It oftentimes makes it more confusing. So wire straight across, then come back and do your seal in wiring. All right, so that's two more wires that I need. So I have to use my auxiliary contact of the motor starter, which I forgot to edit that. That's actually the M1 because the M1 coil is controlling this auxiliary contact here. Okay, so I'm using uh, this first set of contacts, which is 53 and 54. All right, so I'm coming off of the jumper between my stop and my start. Okay, so that's where I'm going into my um, auxiliary contact, okay? I'm actually going into 54 and 53, the way I have it wired. Um, so I'm coming off of the jumper between the stop and the start. And again, you have to interpret these uh, ladder logic diagrams. Now you can't actually connect where this is drawn because if I tried to do that, that would be right in the center of this wire, which you can't do that. So I either have to pick this right side of the stop button or the left side of the start. So I just came off the left side of the start where I jump between stop and start and go to one side of my normally open contact, which is 54. And I come out of 53 and I jump it to A1. Okay, so I just went because it's closer from 53 to A1. I could take it back to the start button. So I could bring it and go back over here. But since these components are right next to one another, I just chose to do that connection because it's closer and was more convenient to do it that way. All right, so that's all the uh, connections. So that allows us to have our uh, start stop with memory. So when I hit the start, the current flows across to energize the coil. When the coil energizes, the main contacts pull in. So if I had my three-phase connected, I would 
have my motor running right now. That also, at the same time, closes my normally open auxiliary contacts. And so that is providing an additional path for current flow around the start button so that it will remain energized once I release my start button. Okay, so that's why it's still energized right now. All right, so it will remain energized until I hit my stop button or if an overload occurs, okay? So the stop button is always wired in series. So when I push that, that opens the connection and that breaks the path of current flow. So the coil de-energizes, the contacts open, the main contacts and the auxiliary. So that turns off the motor and that deactivates the memory or seal in and the motor would be off and the motor starter is off, okay? So the other way that the coil will de-energize is if the overloads occur if an overload event occurs. Um, so if the motor is drawing too much current or there's a short that is sensed by the overloads in the overload block here, then that would trip the overload contacts, which I've just simulated that here, and that will open that 95 and 96 um, connection right here and that will break the path of current flow. So the coil de-energizes, so the motor would turn off. The auxiliary contacts open, so you no longer have the seal in, okay? So that's how we protect the motor from an overcurrent event. So you have to have those normally closed um, contacts wired to the, uh, motor starter coil. So that way that if even just one of the phases are drawing too much current, it will totally de-energize power to the motor, which is what we want. Okay, and then we can then reset it, reset the overloads and start it back up. Okay. All right, so I'll do a couple other things with some pilot lights just to show you some additional control we can have with this, but that's the basic operation of the start, stop, and memory with the motor starter. Okay, so I'm going to add next some uh, pilot lights to this and show you some different things with the different contacts. Okay, so I've added a couple of pilot lights to my motor starter for some additional control to indicate the operation of what's happening with this motor's operation. So I have um, brought in another power connection into another one of my normally open auxiliary contacts right here. It's coming from the uh, power supply into 84. And then I'm coming out of 83 and going to my green pilot light. So that way when I start it and the motor's running, I have a light to indicate that the motor is running, okay? And you could use those contacts for multiple purposes to control other things. I could use my normally closed pilot lights to control additional lights or solenoids or relays or whatever I needed to control, all right? So I've added a red pilot light uh, that is going to indicate when the motor has overloaded. So I'm using the 97 and 98, which is the normally open overload contact, okay? Um, so here, if the motor is on and running and everything's fine, that light's not gonna be on, okay? So the only time this light is gonna come on is when I, or is when is when the uh, motor itself has an overcurrent condition. Um, so it's not normally going to be on during normal operation. All right. So what I've done to wire this, I've just jumped off where I have that power connection here into the 97, and then I come out of my 98, 
and go to the pilot light. And then the pilot lights are tied together to go back to the negative side of my DC source. So if the motor is running and it starts drawing too much current and the overloads trip, simulating that there, then the red light you see comes on, okay, to indicate uh, the overload, okay? So if I try to start it, it's not gonna do anything because the normally closed contact is still open, so the overloads are still tripped for this motor starter, okay? So once I see that it's tripped, reset the overloads, the pilot light goes off, and I can restart that motor, okay? So I didn't add that to my drawing here, but I would just come down with another line with a normally open contact with 84 and 83 to my green light, and then I would have another line after that with the 97 and 98 to the red pilot light, and then both of those connect back to L2, all right? So for this one, I would add another number to my cross-reference. So that would be line three for the green pilot light. The red one would not be numbered though because it's part of the overload contact. So it's not a part of the normal operation of the motor starter. So that only, that light only comes on if there's a problem, if there's an overcurrent condition, all right? So I hope this helps giving you a better understanding of how to uh, use the magnetic motor starter and the different components that um, we have with it and how they all work together to control the operation of a motor in an industrial process.